My name is Steve Rhodes and you're listening to a recording of a presentation prepared for the World Steel Bridge Symposium in St. Louis, April 2019, which we hope will encourage you to read our paper, which concerns steel bridge member resistance and compares AASHTO to other international codes. If we were to analyse and design this bridge using different codes of practice, the same loading but different resistance calculations, should the results be much different? After all, this bridge doesn't know whether it's in Europe, the US or anywhere else. And with the latest developments in Lucis, we can carry out steel design checks automatically. So we've taken that truss footbridge based on a real structure, modified it a little to use a few different section types and crunch the numbers. It's a span of 114 foot, 12 bays each of 12 foot length. The trusses are 11 foot deep and they're set 10 foot apart. The top and bottom booms are rectangular hollow steel sections and are treated as continuous. The floor beams are I sections, W8 by 18, and are treated as pin ended. All truss diagonals and roof members are round hollow steel sections and are also treated as pin ended. Steel grade is ASTM A500 grade C for all the hollow sections and Ashto M270 grade 50 for the W beams. We used a footbridge as a comparison so it was simple to compare the resistances rather than also comparing the different traffic loading from the different codes. That would be a paper for another day. Instead we simply applied a UDL of 1.8 kip per foot to each floor beam. We omitted all load factors again to avoid comparing those and stick with the member resistances. Lusas checks every member, in fact every tenth point along a member, tension, compression, flexure, shear and all the interaction formally. It can display the maximum utilisation as contours across the structure, like this, where a utilisation of less than one is okay and a utilisation of more than one is over 100% utilised, so not okay. Lusas also allows us to view tabulated results. Here we can see the axial compression and moment interaction check with three columns for resistance, three columns for the ULS load effects, the utilization ratio, and finally a column with comments. But we can also view rendered calculations. These show the calculation which has been carried out in full, like this extract from a check on a floor beam, where the top flange is in compression and is checked for lateral torsional buckling. You can see how values for FBU, that's the flange stress, FL, the flange lateral bending stress, and the nominal flexural resistance are all substituted in to calculate the utilization of 0.4961. And the rendered calculations include the equations, explanatory notes, and clause references, as you can see. Lucy says steel work calculations covered for a variety of codes of practice from different countries and more on the way. This makes it relatively easy to carry out calculations to more than one code and potentially make this kind of comparison. It's just that on a normal project, you wouldn't do that, whereas in this paper we did. We primarily compared Ashto 8th edition with the Eurocode EN 1993 Part 2, although we also drew on Ashto 7th and the Canadian code CSA S614. Then we took the time to unravel the differences, and it was possible to understand those differences between the codes to a deep level because we had the guys who programmed the software for them all on the team. So, what did we find? This is a half and half plot. You can imagine, if you like, that the Atlantic has been reduced to 114 foot, and we've agreed to build a bridge using Ashdo up to midspan, and then Eurocode for the other side. The colours show the utilisation according to the two codes, so anything red is unsafe according to the relevant code of practice. So on the US side, everything is safe, but on the European side, people are scared to cross this bridge. And the issue is up there in the compression cord, but in fact everywhere in the bridge, the utilisation for compression members are higher for the Eurocode as compared to Ashto, it just comes to a head at midspan in the top cord, where the Eurocode finds the rectangular HSS to be more than 20% overutilized. The governing check for these members is axial compression, buckling with flexure, although there is very little flexure in the top cord. So the underlying difference is due to buckling in axial compression. In Ashto Article 69411, Non-slender members have a nominal compressive resistance, Pn, which is determined from the yielding resistance, 
PO, and the elastic critical buckling resistance, PE. That buckling resistance, PN, is in fact based on the SSRC strength curve 2P, as illustrated in Galambos. The curve used is technically only applicable to certain classes of member, and it assumes an initial out of straightness of length divided by 1500. In the Eurocode, the buckling resistance NBRD is again determined from the yielding resistance, here the cross-sectional area times the yield stress, and this is multiplied by a reduction factor, xi, which is at heart based on the elastic critical buckling resistance, NCR, which is essentially the same as PE in Ashdo, an imperfection factor, alpha, which is selected based on the shape and fabrication of the member, and a set of buckling curves. The formula given essentially replicates these various curves. It's a more elaborate approach than Ashdo, and one assumes that these curves drew on the latest research data at the time of drafting of the code, which was first issued in 2004, whereas the SSRC curves come out of studies at Lehigh, published in 1971. Given all this, it would be reasonable to expect the Eurocode to be more realistic, probably less conservative. But it's not, it's more conservative. Does that mean that the Eurocode is over-conservative, or that Ashdo is, compared to more recent research, perhaps unconservative? Well, if we consider an H section rather than the hollow section and look at a simple pen-ended strut, first we can confirm an Euler calculation and a finite element eigenvalue using Lucis. Both of these give the same elastic critical buckling resistance, 262 kips. That's PE in Ashdo or NBRD in the Eurocode. With more material data, we can do the Ashdo check and we get a nominal compressive resistance of 230 kip, a bit below that 262. With a full nonlinear analysis in Lucis, material yielding and hardening, and geometric nonlinearity, we get a value which is staggeringly close, 232 kip. But only if we use an imperfection of length over 1500 to match the SSRC curve. Do that, and the loosest nonlinear analysis agrees the Ashto nominal capacity to within 1%. But do the same nonlinear analysis with larger imperfections and you'll see the resistance dropping considerably below 232. So, perhaps the Ashdo buckling curves could use re-examination. That assumed imperfection may be completely fine, but is it supposed to take into account residual stresses as well as initial out of straightness? Does it do that as well as the Eurocode does? Now, for the members in this structure, compression checks are of interest for the top boom, rectangular hollow sections, the truss diagonals, the round hollow sections, and the roof bracing diagonals, also round hollow sections. You'll see, however, that there is no contour colour for these roof members. They're shown as ghosts in magenta. That's because these members are disallowed under Article 693. That is, they're deemed by Ashto to be too slender. There's no such slenderness limit in the Eurocode, and these roof diagonals have a utilisation of less than 10%. So, Ashto okays the top chord, which is not okay in the Eurocode, but it disallows these roof diagonals, which the Eurocode reckons are not working hard at all. What's going on? Well, the slenderness limits in Ashto are similar to the suggested limits in AISC 36016. And the AISE commentary indicates that these limits may relate to construction economics, ease of handling, and minimizing inadvertent damage. So instead of Ashdo being needlessly conservative here, perhaps we can say that the Ashdo rules impose a pragmatic limit, which, in fact, the Eurocode is lacking. And there is a certain pragmatism about the Ashto code, which you see right there in the contents, with chapters for tension members, compression members, and I-section flexural members, and so on. 
the engineer essentially categorizes the member themselves and then the checks are all set out. Or in our case, the software does that for you. In the Eurocode, on the contrary, there's no special chapter for eye sections in Fletcher. The chapter includes all the checks and is applicable for any section. With a second chapter covering the buckling checks for any member. One might think of the Eurocode as more general, applying the same rules to all sections as far as possible. However we characterise the differences, there's really no one-to-one -one correlation between the articles in the two codes. And there's just a big difference in the history. Ashto has an ancestry which can be traced back through the standard specifications and earlier for more than 80 years while the Eurocode was only completed in 2005, and it came out of a desire to eliminate obstacles to trade across Europe. It wasn't actually an attempt to determine best practice. That was perhaps more of a side benefit of that project. Okay, it may be difficult to compare articles, but we can compare some output. Tension capacity in the bottom cord, tension in the diagonals, and in the roof members. And the one that stands out here is that higher value in the Eurocode for diagonals. And the difference is that Ashdo makes allowance for shear lag at fasteners, while the Eurocode makes no such allowance. The Canadian code is closer to Ashdo in this instance. Compression checks we've already talked about at length. The smaller values from the Eurocode, despite the apparently more refined calculation approach and the roof members which are not allowed under Ashto rules due to considerations of slenderness. Fletchural checks, very good agreement on the fletchural checks for hollow sections. When considering the I sections in Fletcher, the governing check for Ashto is the lateral torsional buckling article which uses the stress-based formula here in article 610811 since the 5th edition in 2010. Previous editions used a moment-based formula. The Eurocode checks for Fletcher. Of course, these are not specific to I sections. The same approach is used for all sections and then the checks for buckling are in a separate chapter. Again, lateral torsional buckling governs. Here it's handled using a reduction factor Xi LT, a method consistent with the checks for buckling in axial compression. And the calculation is quite elaborate and takes quite a few pages. But despite such different approaches in the two codes, the utilizations in this example come out very close. In shear, the W8 by 18 floor beams are governed by plastic resistance, with the Eurocode giving the larger resistance after a more exhaustive, or perhaps exhausting, calculation to determine a suitable, larger in this case, shear area. The final utilizations, which really matter, aren't the basic checks on tension, compression, flexure and shear, it's the interaction checks where these quantities can all be brought together. For bending and tension, all the codes in this study have a check, although the Canadian one doesn't account for biaxial bending. The Eurocode uses a bending resistance which is reduced in consideration of the tension stress. The Ashto approach seemed most clear and rational. For bending and compression, buckling. Again, all three codes offer a check. For bending and shear, the Eurocode and Canadian code both have an interaction check. The Eurocode uses a bending resistance where the strength of the material in the web is reduced in respect of the shear that it's carrying. Ashto has no corresponding check. The Ashto checks in general. There are a few articles, but they typically look pretty much like this one for bending and compression. There are some fixed factors involved. A half on the actual component or eight ninths on the moment component. And the US code offers some relatively simple moment magnification formulae to take account of the second order effects too. The Canadian code has a more lengthy approach when it comes to determining those factors and moment magnifiers. The caveats for the factors applied go on for a page or so. Uh, 
The Eurocode looks a bit different, but breaking it down, it's a similar summation. It includes a material factor. It also includes the reduction factors for buckling, the xi factors, which we talked about before, for buckling based on those various curves and imperfections. It has those for both compression and for lateral torsional buckling. Then there are the additional moments arising from second order effects. The Eurocode insists that they are included, but it doesn't offer a simplified rule, an amplification factor, like Ashdo and the Canadian Code do. No, for this study, we use the geometrically nonlinear analysis functions in Lucis to actually perform a full second order analysis. It wasn't hard, but it's something which the Eurocode seems to lead you towards because it doesn't suggest any other way. Finally, there are the interaction factors, the ones which are, you know, a half or eight ninths in Ashto. In the Eurocode, there are two alternative methods, but they're both fairly much like this. quite a lot of work to obtain the values. In fact, that's not even the whole method that just rolled by. There's more. I was just glad that Lucis was going through all those clauses instead of me, especially since the final utilizations from the codes were very close. The largest difference is really coming from the compressive buckling resistance, which we talked about back at the start. So it's not a very scientific slide because it's going to vary a lot from structure to structure, but the calculations are set up in the same sort of format, so we can surely get an idea of the relative effort involved in preparing designs to the different codes. If we take the shortest calculations as our benchmark, that's Ashto. And for every 10 pages of Ashto calcs, we had 12 pages of calcs to the Canadian code and 31 pages of Eurocode calcs. So the Eurocode did seem, in this case, to represent more calculation effort. Before we conclude, a couple of points that should be made about modeling a structure like this. Support conditions. The example truss was modeled pinned at one bearing and guided or free at the other bearing so as to allow free expansion and contraction. Errors in support conditions are amongst the most common that we see on the Lucis support desk, and a typical error in a structure of this sort would be engineers using pinned bearings at all four corners. Even just considering a first order analysis, that would radically alter the behavior and the utilizations. Here with the free movement of bearings, tension in the bottom cord is about 80% utilization at mid-span and 10% at the ends. With pinned bearings, Mid-span is apparently down to 20%, but the ends are pushed up beyond 90%. And member-end releases. We treated the diagonals and the floor beams as pinned. If they were treated as fixed-ended, again, there's quite a big change in the stress distribution and therefore the utilizations. And when there is the ability to calculate these utilizations automatically, of course, making a change like this in the model doesn't mean reworking mountains of calculations. The whole frame is rechecked in seconds. But it's important to pay attention to these details or at least to investigate what effect the modeling assumptions are having. OK, to summarize. For tension members, Ashto seems superior to the Eurocode because it includes the effects of shear lag at fasteners. Some compression members, which should be acceptable under Eurocode rules, are not allowed under Ashto rules due to considerations of slenderness. For buckling and compression, the Eurocode is more conservative and, with a more elaborate approach for imperfections, may be more realistic. Shear. Again, the Eurocode takes a more sophisticated approach for shear areas. Interaction checks. The Eurocode includes shear bending and shear bending and axial forces, which are omitted in Ashdo. But Ashdo offers the simpler approach and the simple formulae for moment magnification. And Ashdo really is more concise. That concludes our presentation. We hope you found it informative.